How's it going everybody? So today's video is about the vault door that I built last week. If you are more interested in the Fallout themed video I did, I did one of those last week and so I will put that as the top link in my description because that might be more your speed. But if you're more interested in seeing how I built it and what the process was trying to engineer this door to function properly, that's what this video is going to be about. So the reason this video even came about was because I had this spot underneath my workbench. It's kind of an empty cavity that the kids always like playing in. I decided to keep the spot open so that the kids could keep playing in it. And the reason I came up with the vault door concept is because I have so many different subscribers that keep commenting on all of the Fallout shirts that I wear. My daughter and I are both fans of Fallout, so I thought this was a fitting project. So the first thing I did was I decided on what size I wanted the opening to be, and then I added the tooth diameter onto that. And so then I took that full dimension and cut two square pieces of plywood to about that size. So I decided to cheat just a little bit by using an eight tooth gear rather than the nine tooth which you usually see in the Fallout universe just because eight is a lot more easily divisible by four since I'm using a square to find all of my gear teeth. I ended up finding this Vault 96 door that I thought looked really cool and would be the easiest one to duplicate out of wood. But the cool thing about the vault doors is there's actually a few different designs of vault doors depending on which game you're building this off of. So you can kind of design it however you want. Once I had the design of the gear set to what I wanted, I decided to draw two circles on the first sheet of plywood. The first circle would basically be the opening of the door and the other circle represents the ends of each of the teeth. And then once that was drawn, I could draw out each of the eight axes. I made this one gear tooth by cutting a 10 degree angle in a square board and that way I could duplicate the same tooth on all eight axes. And then I just used a jigsaw to cut that out. One of the trickier parts was trying to figure out how to make the rack for the gear. There are very complicated ways of figuring out how to make one of these, but the way I did it was just to clamp a board as a spacer on the bottom of the plywood and then just mark the space that I wanted to uh, leave as a positive gear on each of the teeth. Then all I had to do was remove all of the negative space with a jigsaw again. And other than sanding, that piece is basically done. I did make it uh, extra long because I really wasn't sure how long I wanted it at first. I ended up cutting off about three teeth off of both of the pieces because I had to make two parts to both the gear and the rack itself. I could have easily cut this out with a jigsaw just like I did with the first ones and then maybe sand to fit, but I ended up using a template bit which gave me a much smoother finish. And that may have actually been a really bad idea because I ended up pushing the router so hard, uh, cutting out these gears, that I ended up burning it up. I didn't catch it on camera, but oh my goodness, I don't know what happened. It's smoking. It sparked really bad. I was almost done cutting out my gear. To be honest, I didn't feel like I was pushing it that hard, but it was getting warm, and so I had to let it cool off a couple of times, and then when I came back to route again, it did that. So I think I definitely pushed it a little bit too hard. It's also 10 years old, so that might be part of it. But to tell you the truth, I'm not even upset because it gave me an excuse to go out and get myself a new router from Menards, and this one has a digital readout for the RPMs. The other one didn't have any choice of the RPMs. This one does, and it also starts up with less of a jolt, which is kind of nice. But to tell you the truth, I'm probably still a little bit biased towards my old one. I still enjoy using that one a little bit more, so I'm a bit sad that it burned up. Once I was done cutting out the rack and gear, I turned my attention to the two faces, the front and the rear. The rear was easy enough, I just cut it to a square and then cut a square opening to match the cubby that I was placing it in. But the front was a little bit more complicated because I had to cut the negative of the gear but about a quarter inch undersized so that when the whole thing was shut, it would have the proper amount of reveal. Uh-oh. You all right? There you go. Once I had the front and the back of the gear cut out, I decided to cut all of the facets into one of the pieces of plywood so that when they were screwed together, you would end up with all of those negative spaces on the front. 
And then once that was done, I just went ahead and glued and screwed these two pieces together. Normally you'd wanna be really careful with all of the squeeze out on these things, and I probably would have spent a little bit of extra time uh, cleaning up all of that extra squeeze out from the glue, but because this project is supposed to be really rustic, I didn't even worry about it. I just kind of scraped some of it around and left some of it bumpy because it just adds to the aged look of the piece. One of the most difficult parts about this build was the latch mechanism. I wasn't really sure how to build it since this is such an unusual door shape, but I also knew that I didn't want any kind of exposed hardware. And so what I did is I ended up using a wooden spring latch and I ended up cutting the latch to the same angle as the gear. And then I had to cut away some of the frames so that the latch would spring back correctly. Once I had everything together and the way I thought it would work, I decided to do a dry fit. I wanted to be able to take this thing apart into any layer that I wanted to, so I ended up screwing each piece together individually with these little one inch screws. And here you can see the idea behind how the latch is supposed to function. This is also where you can see that I hit a couple of the vault boys in the original video. I really wanted to see if people were going to spot all four of them. So at this point I was about three days into the build and I was ecstatic that this latch actually worked as well as it did. Since the latch was set at a 10 degree angle, I really didn't know if it was going to function properly because I didn't know if it would actually hold the gear in place, but it ended up working so well. I did nothing but actually shut the door for probably close to half an hour straight after this. I was so happy that it worked out. Once I had everything functioning properly, I drilled a hole so that I could put a dowel on the back of the latch so that I could open it from the inside and the outside. It was really important for me to make sure that the door could be opened from the inside and the outside. That way when the kids went inside, if they decided to shut the door, they wouldn't be stuck. I ended up having to do just a little bit of troubleshooting off camera, but the latch did end up working very well. So it was a bit tricky trying to figure out how to paint this piece because I wanted the finished product to look like aged metal. And Rust-Oleum actually makes a color that is designed to look exactly like old rust. And so once I had the base coat covering the entire piece, I used a mixture of water and salt in just random spots all over the project so that when I put the secondary coat over the top of it, I could scrape all of the salt away and it would end up having this really cool speckled rust look. The top coat I used for this project was called Soft Iron. It's also from Rust-Oleum, and that gets sprayed on right over the salt. And this is my favorite part. Once you start rubbing off all of the salt, it ends up showing all of the rust color underneath, giving you a very cool rusted color look. The way I did the number was I put a few pieces of tape over the top of where the numbers needed to be, and then I freehanded the number 29 over it and then cut out the negative with a razor blade. And if you haven't quite figured it out yet, the reason I chose the number 29 is because in the Fallout universe, the Vault 29 was the vault that only kids were allowed into. There were no adults allowed. As it turns out, Krylon makes the perfect color for this. It's called Sun Yellow. If you're going to be making anything from the Fallout universe, I highly recommend using this Krylon Sun Yellow. It really does seem to be used all over that universe. So I really do like the way these numbers turned out, however, if I was going to do this again, I would probably use something like a stencil. I ended up having to go over these numbers again with a paintbrush when I was done with this to kind of clean up some of the imperfections that I had from this process. I'm going to be putting links in my description to all of the products that I used in this project that you can get off of Amazon, as well as a few that I wish I had used, such as the stencils that would make this project look even better if you're planning on recreating it. That way you don't run into the same issues I did. The only other thing I would probably change on this project if I was going to do it again would be the rust color. Even though I think it turned out really cool looking, I would use a brighter color of rust just so that it shows up a little bit better. Even though this is the actual color of rust, I think a slightly brighter color would make it pop just a little bit more and give you the same ambiance that the Vault Universe has. The last thing I did before I screwed everything together was I put a paste wax over all of the dynamic parts. All of the parts that move across each other really needed to be nice and slick so that they didn't bind anywhere.
I did forget to get footage of me installing this handle on the back of the door. My wife literally handed me a scrap of wood and asked, is this something you could use as the handle on the back? And so I installed it really quick to see if it would work and I cut a quick relief on the back of the door to accept the handle and it just worked perfectly first try. It all happened within about five minutes and I forgot to get footage, so my bad. So this door assembly is surprisingly easy to install. It's only a matter of a few screws since there is a negative of the gear tooth on the front and it's square on the back, it's really easy to just screw into place. I wanted this to be a mobile system so that if I ever decide to move it out from under my bench or put it somewhere else, I have that option. The last thing I decided to add was this keypad which my daughter decided was a necessity. And after I furnished the inside, it turned out very cool. I ended up adding a table and chairs that I made, as well as a few other fallout items that I've accumulated over the years. Well, thanks everybody for watching. I'm happy I was finally able to make this area under my workbench a fun spot for the kids to play in. If you could do me a favor, check out the two videos that are popping up on screen. The first one is to the themed video I did on this project. I'm really happy with the way that video turned out and it was a lot more fun to film. If you could think about giving the video a thumbs up, that always helps the channel. But either way, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Can I come in the vault?